Here's Brody Brazil. I'm about to pose a question that we used to ask all the time about the San Jose Sharks, but it's one that we've obviously gotten away from in recent years. And that is, where will this team finish in the standings after 82 games? And for more than a decade, the question was like, could they win the Pacific Division? How high could they seed in the Western Conference? And inevitably, in the Stanley Cup playoffs that they were bound to make, how many rounds would they have home ice advantage for? Well, here in 2023, it's been three going on now four seasons in a row without making or qualifying for the playoffs. And we're asking this question again, but for a very different set of circumstances. It's not about being at the top. It's now about being at the bottom of the standings, which is unfortunate. But again, it's also important because this could have a payoff for the Sharks in the upcoming NHL draft. Now, I almost considered titling this video something having to do with tanking because I know that's how fans put it. I know that's how outsiders spectate. Would a team tank to try and get a top draft pick? And, and let me just say, tanking is not only bad sportsmanship, but I don't even think it's actually possible in the way most fans consider it. How do you walk into a professional sporting clubhouse, locker room, dressing room of any sport, football, baseball, basketball, hockey, and say, we're going to lose on purpose? That just does not fly. And if you were to even suggest that to the hardworking players and coaching staff, I mean, it wouldn't even last two seconds before you would be <laughs> escorted out the door. So that, that thought for players with everything on the, on the line for them, their next contract, their reputation, their pride, that goes for coaches too. I mean, none of that is even possible that a team would be willing to sacrifice themselves in the present for the hope of the team and other people to, to cash in on the future. That, that's, again, I'm saying it's not good sportsmanship here. Let's be very clear. That's not something that a professional team really is going to do for the purposes of a draft pick. But I will tell you this, as rough as the Sharks have had it through now more than half of their regular season, the shape of this team might dramatically change in this second half of the season because of trades, because of call-ups and opportunities, and just a total restructuring and reshifting of the roster and of the lineup on a regular basis. So it, I'm not saying that it's intentionally tanking, right? If, if you're going to lose games, have it be organically. Have it be because you tried something new or you gave younger players an opportunity or you felt it was time for that transition and some of the Barracuda guys get the call-ups or, like I said, transition might equal a different look, might equal even worse results than we've seen so far for the San Jose Sharks. I don't wish that. I'm just saying... That could be part of the equation here in the second half. But ultimately, everybody's talking about this right now because we all realize the 2023 NHL draft class is beyond loaded. And obviously, Connor Bedard is the headliner. And what he did at World Juniors blew everybody's socks off. Actually, you know what? It, it confirmed their expectations of him. If he had a bad tournament... You feel like the stock and the, the the value could only go down just a little bit, but all he did was solidify himself as the number one draft pick in the NHL this upcoming summer. Whatever team is lucky enough to get him. But the bottom line is it's not just him. It's literally one through five, maybe even one through ten. These are all players that are bona fide and almost guaranteed to help a team in the coming years. Have you ever seen tankathon.com? I've heard of it. I finally checked it out. Um, I saw what they do here. They, they run you through a bunch of simulations to give you the idea of how it could look. Now, let me just say the Sharks here at number one picking Connor Bedard. That is not <laughs> that is not a frequent uh, random play out here. I had to had to click reload a bunch of times to get it to look like this. This is not impossible. But at this juncture, where the Sharks are in the standings, one of the bottom five teams, but not at the bottom, this one is not likely. And I'll go through the percentages 
of, of this happening in just a second. But you could see here very easily, I run it through this simulation a bunch of times, you see the sharks at number one, or a lot of times you see them at two, three, four, or five, or in this case, seventh, drafting Edouard Chalet from the Czech Republic, the winger who was born in March of 2005. I mean, it could also look like this. Now, Chalet, not a bad player, could help the team inevitably, but obviously with Bedard and Fantilli at the very top, those are the prime two that everybody's talking about. And so even when you discuss, you know, not having success and hoping that it pays off, what are your odds to even get one of those top two, if not three, if not five, or top 10? I mean, they're, here the Sharks are seventh overall in a lot of simulations. So I, I just want to play it out here. It could look very much like this with some less than great luck. Now, it's a lottery, right? So the ping pong balls come out where the Sharks finish. Like I said, it's as important as ever. Unfortunately, it's how low they're finishing. That's the important part. It gives you the better odds to have a higher draft pick. And as for the top pick, if you're one of the bottom five teams, you have anywhere from an 8.5% chance to a 25.5% chance for the top pick. If you finish last in the NHL, 32nd overall, you still only have a 25.5% chance for that top pick. Let me say that again. Even if you're the last place team, right? Like Chicago's been hovering in that spot a lot of this regular season so far. Even if you're the very worst, you only have basically a one in four chance of landing Connor Bedard. Now, one or two, right? Now you're maybe looking at more like 40% of one of the top two picks, but still, it's not a lock. It's not a guarantee. And it has been these bottom five teams throughout the course of the regular season. The Sharks, Arizona, Columbus. One thing I want to say about Anaheim, they seem like they're still building and growing and hoping to go in the right direction, but they by far, as I record this right now, have the worst Goal differential in the league. I think even Chicago's at like a minus 50, but I think the Ducks are at close to a minus 80, like 30 goals worse on the differential. So who will actually be the worst team by the end of this season? Will the Sharks be there? Will they be there because of the way it played out? Will they be there because they tried some different things with their team in the second half? Again, I I want to take... I want to take the words, the word tanking out of a lot of people's minds because it just, it does not and could not ever work that way. I saw some quotes from Mike Greer recently discussing this, but I mean, I don't, I don't even think you need the GM and former player to tell you this just doesn't happen like that inside a dressing room, on the bench, on the ice, at practice. Uh, it might change that the team is trying to move in a, di- a different direction. And I think it's obvious the Sharks, with or without the NHL draft, like they're in need of making some moves to clear up some cap space, to give themselves flexibility and opportunity for the future. So it's not even like that is tanking. That's something they had to and needed to do anyways in the second half of this season, if not into the summer. So here we are again. Where will the Sharks finish? Super important in the first couple months here of 2023. And it's a question we used to ask all the time. We used to wonder because of the benefits it came with. Well, now we're still asking the question. We got away from it for a couple of years. We knew that they were maybe middle of the pack, middle to bottom, and now they're close to the bottom. And we're asking this important question again because of the payoff it could provide. Now, one of those top three draft picks that you just saw there, could they alone change the face of the franchise? Possibly. I think the best way I've always put it is that any player like that could be the foundation of your future, but it's not guaranteed to be the entire house. You still have to do some building. And if I had no better example, uh, tell me how many Stanley Cups Connor McDavid has already won, right? It is literally that. So you have to do a good job of building around whoever gets the number one draft pick this summer. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. <music>